These geckos are epic. New Zealand is an epic country. Who would have thought we have some of the most incredible species of gecko thriving at the bottom of the world? So why are these geckos so special? All right, you might want to pay attention to this. I'm Max, I live at the bottom of the world, New Zealand. I have some fantastic beasts, and at my ripe age of 35, I just haven't grown out of it. Love drinking, but it's not problematic, I assure you. Our geckos are special because they thrive in incredibly harsh climates, like this tree frog. This is a brown whistling tree frog naturalized in New Zealand and thrives in the South Island of New Zealand. Originally from Australia, loves going for a little dip. We have some incredible species here in New Zealand. We have some harsh climates here in New Zealand. It's incredible that these animals, these ectotherms, that regulate their body temperatures can thrive in these conditions. I have three species. I have the Northland Green Gecko, I have the Royal Kawa Gecko, and the Frost Gecko, with hopefully more to come in the future. Now you need a permit to keep these in New Zealand, and that's simply because they're precious. We need to make sure that these animals are looked after. So I'm very fortunate to be able to keep these in captivity. Now ironically, I've never seen these three species in the wild. I've only ever seen one species in the wild, and that is a rough gecko. So when I say rare, even in New Zealand, they're rare. Globally. If you get to spot these at one of your local zoos, then you're very fortunate. But it's what makes my collection so special. I have leopard geckos, I have fish, but nothing beats these guys. I hope you enjoy this one. All right, coffee time. One and two. Oh yes, please. God, I need this. God damn, that's good. All right, let's check out some New Zealand geckos. I'm Max. Ever since I was a kid, I was obsessed with geckos. And now at the ripe age of 35, nothing has changed. Like I said at the beginning, I have some fantastic beasts. I'm here to show you how dope these animals really are. So how do I look after these amazing animals? Well, let's check it out. Alright, let's talk about the fun stuff. This is a juvenile Northland Green Gecko. Now I live in the South Island, so I keep these guys as juveniles inside until they get a little bit bigger and then they can handle the cold winters down here. They live in the tip of the North Island and they're amazing animals. Look at those colorations. Some of those rare species in the world. Now how do I keep these guys? I keep these guys in bioactive environments. Because New Zealand geckos, you need a permit to keep these, meaning that you need to keep them in appropriate environments. The correct microclimates, enough hides, enough vegetation. They're arboreal as well, so they need a lot of climbing elements fresh water, and regular misting. So this is how I like to keep the indoor enclosure set up for these guys. Lots of fresh flora, bioactive, and LED and UVB lighting. I change out the flora or the brows once every two to three days to make sure there's always fresh brows in there for them. Now what do native geckos of New Zealand eat? Well, them being mainly insectivores, insects. So. You've got your mealworms, you've got your crickets, you've got your locusts, you've got your bugs. I do a bit of free range, so I collect bugs from the wild as long as there are non-pesticide areas as well as commercial trade insects. With multiple enclosures and multiple animals, I like to have diversity with my indoor and outdoor flow. This is Godzilla, he's one of my OGs. This is another enclosure. This has my Royal Kawa geckos in it. There's four of them. The Royal Kawa gecko is a terrestrial gecko, so I try to replicate that kind of environment. They're also heavily nocturnal, but still come out during the day, which makes them epic little guys. Now in New Zealand, we have microclimates all over the country, meaning that we get blistering hot days as well as ice freezing cold days. So you need to create this environment so they have lots of hides, lots of areas to escape these extremes or extremities and can regulate their body temperatures. Now isopods are very important because it's a bioactive enclosure. I make sure I have lots of isopods, lots of roly polies, lots of springtails, soil bugs to make sure that these guys are nice and healthy and their environment is nice and healthy. So what makes this gecko so special compared to all the other geckos around the world? Well firstly, this gecko only exists in this part of the world, New Zealand, the bottom of the world. I also have a permit to keep these guys and I'm extremely fortunate to be able to keep these guys in captivity and assist with the conservation program. What this means is we have the privilege to keep insurance population species in captivity for the future. And I think that's pretty dope.
So what's next in store for me? What's next in store for this channel? I don't know. I really don't know. All I know is, is that I've got some incredible animals. Maybe I'll let you guys tell me. Maybe I'll let you decide. You tell me what you want to see. These guys do keep me busy. They keep me really busy. Whether it's the whistling tree frogs, the northern green geckos, the leopard geckos. Remember, do your research if you plan to get these guys as pets. So if you do go down this path, the journey to keep these incredible animals in captivity, whether it's reptiles, amphibians, fish, or invertebrae, it's worth it. I'm Max. I live at the bottom of the world. I hope you like this one.